Hey guys and welcome to this Unity tutorial and today we'll be learning how to create a semi-realistic AI that follows you around, has a certain field of view and only runs to the last known position the player was seen. So if it loses vision of us it doesn't magically know where we are but it runs to the last place it saw us. So let's start a quick demonstration. I've built a simple level and let's see what happens. Okay so we're inside the field of view of the enemy and it's clearly following us. But if I do this, whoop, now it doesn't see us anymore and it goes to the last known position which was uh, illustrated by the ghost of the player. And furthermore, you can see that we are outside of the field of view of the enemy which is indicated by these two lines. And if we go inside of it, it will start to chase us. And again, we see the ghost. The enemy doesn't see us, but if we get inside of their field of view, it starts chasing us again. There we go. Uh, I would like to mention that the entire project with the finished version is available on GitHub. The GitHub link is in the description, as well as my website description with the other stuff that I do. Before we start coding our enemy AI, we first need to define how it works. To help us do that, we have this little image right here. The red circle represents the enemy, the green circle represents the player, the vertical line coming out of the enemy represents the forward-facing vector, labeled forward, these two lines to the side are the field of view of the enemy. Now I chose 94 degree because that is the the angle that the human eye detects motion. So outside of that uh, angle we do not see anything anymore basically. So let's first define the angle between the forward facing vector and the vector that's going from the enemy to the player. So that would be this little orange line. And as we can see, we labeled it angle. Now, as long as this angle is less than the 94 degree angle of our field of view, we know that our enemy is in our field of view. Another thing we'll have to watch out for is whether or not there are any obstacles between the player and the enemy. Of course, we don't want our enemy to be able to see through walls. So we'll have to put that into code as well. So now that that's set, let's go to code. So in this tutorial, to start off, we're going to assume that you know a little bit about navigation in Unity, that you know about the baking of the navmesh, and that you know the basics, and I mean the real basics of navmesh agents. Okay, so that said, we have the environment with a baked navigation mesh, we have our player that's fully controllable, and we have our AI capsule that will be defining from now on. Another thing I want to say is that the player has the player tag so that we can reference the hit the hit detection of a raycast later but you know we're gonna get there. So the first thing you want to do is you want to add the navmesh agent to your enemy and let's inspect it a bit to see that the collision is okay from what I can see yep the collision fits the capsule so we're gonna just leave it at that. I'm not going to change any parameters because I think they're just fine for this tutorial. Okay, now let's create a script. We're going to call this script enemy AI tutorial and we're going to attach that script to the enemy AI. Now that we've opened the enemy AI script, there's a couple of things we're going to do first. The first thing we're going to just delete these comments because we don't need them. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to import a nav mesh uh, agent using library. So let's go using Unity Engine dot AI. That's the library you have to use in order to use the nav mesh agent types. So let's define the nav mesh agent, public nav mesh agent, and let's call it AI. Now we'll use this variable in order to set the destination of the nav mesh agent and in order to stop the navmesh agent when it needs to stop. Uh, another thing we're going to be using is of course we're going to have to have a reference to our player game object so let's call it game object player and also we'll need a game object called player ghost so that we will be able to visualize the player ghost when the player has been lost in sight. We will not be doing the line renderers and all the visualization in this tutorial. If you want to, of course, you can download the project and say how those things are set up. Okay, uh, next thing we just delete the start method because we won't be needing that for now. And in the update method, we want to see if the enemy 
is visible, I mean if the player is visible by the enemy. So let's do if player is visible, then do some stuff. Now we first have to define this method. Let's go define it. So it's a boolean, it will return either true or false based on player visibility. And there we go. Now let's create a variable bool visibility and put it false by default and by default return it there we go now this is what we're going to do we're going to cast a ray from the position of the enemy to the position of the player so let's do this let's go physics dot ray cast okay so it says vector tree origin so our origin is of course ourselves or the enemy in this case transform dot position there we go okay now we have the vector tree direction okay so we have to get the direction in which we want to fire the ray cast of course we need to somehow get that so this is what we're going to do this is just simple maths we have two vectors we have the end point and the beginning point so let's define the vector 3 direction direction as this just player dot transform dot position minus transform dot position okay so this so if we deduce transform position from the player transform position because of how vectors work we will get the direction in which we want to cast our ray so let's do that we cast into the direction uh, now, we want to store the information about the thing we hit with our raycast. So let's put a raycast hit. Let's call the variable hit here. And we do out hit. This is because this will then use the hit variable, actually the memory address of the hit variable, to store whatever the physics raycast method did into the hit variable and then we, we can use it later on. Uh, what we have to do next, uh, the max distance. So in this case, we're just gonna do math infinity because we really don't care about the distance and we have no layer masks. Okay, cool. Now, since we can see if we hit something, let's do this. Let's check the tag of the thing we hit. So if hit.tag.transform.tag equals player.transform.tag. There we go. So now if we actually hit the player and not the wall or anything else, we know we see him. We have a direct line of sight. But if we can hit him, that doesn't necessarily mean we can see him because he might be outside our field of view. So in order to see if the player is inside our field of view, we first need to define our field of view. So let's go public float field of view and let's put the 94 degrees that we use prior. Okay, so now that we have our field of view defined, let's check the angle between the direction vector and the forward vector. Okay, so this is how we do it. Let's define a float angle, and that will be the vector 3 dot angle between, of course, transform dot forward, because we want to check the angle between the forward vector and the direction, and of course, direction. There we go. The angle method will always return an angle between 0 and 180 degrees. So you have to, don't have to worry about the plus or minus. It's, it's all done for you. Let's format it. And now if the angle is less or equal to, or you can put just less than, up to you, to our field of view, that means the player is visible. So in that case, we say visibility equals true. Another thing we want to do is we want to set the ghost to our current player position. So player ghost dot transform dot position equals player dot transform dot position. There we go. But we don't want to render our ghost as long as we're visible because then you can get clippings and weird stuff so and there's also really no need for the ghost to be visible as long as the player is visible. So let's say player ghost dot set active to be false. 
But if the player is not visible, we just want to set the player ghost to true so that we can see it. Okay, so let's test if this works. Let's go. We hit play. Let's go to our Navish agent and we can see that it actually works. It works as intended. So that's it. That's how you create a simple AI that follows you around, remembers your last known position and just chases you in that way without actually seeing you if you're behind their back. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any new tutorial requests, if you have any things you would like to see be done in Unity, feel free to comment it and uh, I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.